Signal. Signal gasoline. Yes, Signal gasoline is the new gasoline you can prove is superior. Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, one man jury. I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. To the people of Southport, Dan Parcher was more than just a newspaper editor. He was a kind of community conscience. Businessmen would read his column carefully before deciding whether the new bond issue was right or wrong. Housewives looked to his editorials first, then made up their minds about divorce and juvenile delinquency. So it was natural that when Clara Wentworth was brought to trial for the murder of her husband, the people of Southport quoted Dan Parcher in the discussions taking place everywhere in town while the issue was being decided in the courtroom. Dan had placed himself and the paper solidly behind Mrs. Wentworth, a fact which didn't set too well with Mr. Newell, the publisher of his paper. Now listen, Dan, you've had a free reign in the past. You've been allowed to say pretty much what you think. What are you leading up to? Well, it's all right for this paper to be partisan about politics and civic improvement, but it's not all right to print biased editorials on a murder case before the jury delivers a verdict. Wait a minute, Newell. I think we'd better get this straightened out right now. The people of Southport look to me for honest opinions. My responsibility to them is to tell them what I think. And I happen to know she's innocent. Don't ask me why, I just know it. And I'm going to do everything in my power to get that jury to turn in the right verdict. Uh, one man jury, eh? Call it anything you like. You can take it or leave it. Take it on those terms or get yourself a new editor. Hmm. That's a funny attitude for a guy who needs money as badly as you do. There isn't a job big enough to keep me from saying what I believe in, Newell. I see. Well? All right, Parcher. Have it your way. with the prosecution, Mr. Gresham. No, Mrs. Wentworth, after this argument with your husband, did you or did you not purchase a number of capsules of a sleeping drug known as ethanol at Wright's Pharmacy? I've already told you why. I was worried and couldn't... I'm not anything. asking you why, Mrs. Wentworth. Did you buy them? Yes, I did. That's all, Mrs. Wentworth? Mr. Parcher? Be right in a minute. Yeah, let's see. The implication by Mr. Gresham that Mrs. Wentworth's desire for control over her husband's assets amounting to roughly $250,000 constituted a valid motive for his murder is a false one. Mrs. Wentworth already had control over more than half the estate. Her husband had seen to it that she never lacked funds, and the prosecution has yet to establish even with the shadow. <laughs> yeah, good. All right, son. Have him print this double column, middle of page one. This ought to bury it for keeps. What's that, sir? Bury it. That's an idea. Tell them to put this head on it. Epitaph for the state's case. You are a one-man jury, aren't you, Dan? You've taken a firm stand, and the people of Southport are talking about your editorial. It seeps into the jury box, too, and in spite of the efforts of the prosecution, you can see it swaying them. It's not the case of the state versus Clara Wentworth, is it? It's the state versus Dan Parcher, and you're coming out on top. Then, on the 15th day of the trial... Your Honor, I'd like permission to address the court. Proceed, Mr. Gresham. 
Ladies and gentlemen, my, my duties as district attorney, as I conceive them, are not to secure prosecutions regardless of the trend of the evidence. My first duty to the people is to see justice done. Now, it happens occasionally that this is not consistent with my position as prosecutor. <laughs> Last night, facts became available to my office which indicate clearly that the entire edifice of the state's case against Clara Wentworth was built on a false premise. Your Honor, it is the prosecution's wish at this point to dismiss charges against the defendant. Order! Order in the court! Order! What is the wish of the defense? The defense, sir, refuses to accept dismissal of charges. Order! Your Honor, Dismissal of charges by the prosecution does not constitute acquittal in the eyes of the community. It does not offer the defendant any assurance that new charges will not be brought against her at a later date. For those reasons, the defense requests a jury verdict. You have heard the request of the defense, Mr. Gresham? Yes, Your Honor. The prosecution rests. Defense? The defense rests. Members of the jury... Under the circumstances, any remarks I might have regarding your deliberations are superfluous. There will be a five-minute recess while you reach a verdict. Honor. Will the defendant please rise and face the jury? Mr. Foreman. Will you read the verdict? We, the jury, find the defendant not guilty. Uh, pardon me. Excuse me, hey, please. Hey, nice going, Dan. Uh, hello, Ed. Thanks a lot. Oh, Thanks. Thank uh, pardon me, please. I Let me through here. Over, but I just can't I'd like to sit down here, please. Thank you very much. Oh. Hello. You're Mr. Parcher, aren't you? Yes. May I congratulate you, Mrs. Wentworth? Oh, thank you, Mr. Parcher. It meant so much to have you on my side. Hey, ain't you two ever been introduced? I don't think it's necessary, Ann. Oh, Mrs. Wentworth, this is Dan Parcher, smartest man in Southport, if I'm any judge. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. Ed, uh, do you mind? I'd like to see Mrs. Wentworth alone for a moment. Oh, sure. Just run along. You must have a lot to talk about. Hey, uh, this way. The ante room here. Dan. Clara, darling. Mm. When can we tell them? Not for a while yet, dear. We've got to take our time now. It's no news to you if you drive a car that signal gasoline is famous as the go farther gasoline. But recently you've noticed in the ads that you now go farther than ever with new signal gasoline. And I want to tell you why. You see, the amazing power in signal's new super fuel that gives you quicker starting, faster pickup, and higher anti knock also means that you'll find less need for shifting. And shifting, driving in low or second gear, is the demon that wastes gasoline. That's why we say, while you're enjoying those effortless high gear miles with new signal, check your speedometer. You'll find it's a fact. You actually go farther than ever with new signal gasoline. Another good reason for making your next gas stop a stop at one of the friendly stations displaying signals, familiar yellow and black circle signs. Let just one tankful of this great new super fuel show you in your own car why new signal actually is. The new post-war gasoline you can prove is superior. And now, back to the whistler. Dan, you made an eloquent case for Clara Wentworth, didn't you? Once again, the citizens are patting you on the back, telling each other that because of Dan Parcher, justice came out on top. But there was more to it than that, wasn't there, Dan? Quite a bit more. As the months go by, you and Clara see each other more frequently. Then, a short out-of-town trip, and you and Clara were man and wife. 
It was on one of those first few days at home that District Attorney Gresham dropped in for dinner. <laughs> Granny, you know, I think that as DAs go, Gresham isn't so bad. Oh, don't carry this too far, Dan. I'm serious. How about it, Clara? <laughs> I think you're right. Drink on it? Sure, I'll drink on it. Skull. Skull. Ah, oh, thanks. It's at times like this that I realize what an ugly job I have. <laughs> it's all water under the bridge now. Right, Clara? Of course. Oh, you have a wonderful husband, Mrs. Parcher. Oh, yes. I don't believe I could have stood it without him. Oh, come now, Clara. No, it's true, Dan. You know, Mr. Gresham, it wasn't what he said or wrote or what the people who read his article thought that kept me going. It was the feeling that there was a newspaper man named Dan Parcher who had faith in him. Who believed me when I said I was innocent was willing to stake his reputation on it. You know, Mr. Gresham, if it hadn't been for that, I believe I would have killed myself. You're pretty important to her now, aren't you, Dan? She's right. You did risk your career when you defended her. And you risked even more when you married her. But there was something more important at stake, wasn't there? She loves you. You realize it more and more during her first few days in town. And then on the following week, you manage to get away for a few days at your summer cabin at the lake. Clara is thrilled. Oh, damn. Look at the lake with the moon on it. Yeah. Nice, huh? I don't want there ever to be anything but just this, Dan. Just you and I and summer evenings here at the lake. You are happy, aren't you, Clara? I never thought anything could be as, as beautiful as this, Dan. Do you ever think of Walter? Walter? Why do you ask? I just wondered. It's hard to believe he ever existed, Dan. I'm glad you mentioned it, though. We haven't decided about the money. Well, what do you want to do with it? Well, it's a part of Walter. It's the only part left. I know. As long as I have it, I'll feel he's part of our marriage somehow. I want to give it away, Dan. There's so many good things I could do with it. Well, that's going to take a little thought. Well, of course. I want to settle it soon, though. <laughs> By the way, did I ever tell you how much I love you? You scare me sometimes. Scare you? You didn't really mean what you told the DA, did you? About you? Yeah. I'll say it again, dear. If ever I thought you didn't believe in me, if you doubted me or lost your faith, there wouldn't be anything else to live for. If I doubted you? What's the matter? Nothing. Come on. Let's go to bed. It's made you think, hasn't it, Dan? This woman you married tried for the murder of her husband. Said she'd kill herself if you lost faith in her. Why are you so nervous, Dan? Why can't you sleep? Are you sorry now that you appointed yourself a one-man jury in the case of the state versus Clara Wentworth? Clara. Mm -hmm. Clara, darling. Well, what's the matter? Clara, Clara. Uh, what in the world were you dreaming about? Well, I don't know. Dan, tell me what's the matter. Nothing, Clara, nothing. Something wrong. Please, forget about it. Dan! I said forget about it. Dan, if you'll build a fire in the dining room, I think we can have some lunch. I'm not hungry. We didn't eat breakfast, dear. I said I'm not hungry, Clara. Dan, tell me, what is the matter? I don't know. Did I say something awful in my sleep? Yes. What? Please, Clara, can't we just forget it for the moment? I, I'd rather not say anything. It, it was probably just a... Oh, I don't know. Let's forget it. But, Dan, it can't be anything serious. Can't you see? Please, Clara. Very well, Dan. Come on, it's the fire. Well, Dan. It's getting it down, isn't it? Dan Parcher, champion of justice, upholder of the right. That's a laugh, isn't it? You've given up trying to shut it out of your mind. It's there now, all the time. The next night is the same. More thinking, more worry. Then soon after, Clara drops off to sleep. 
Clara. Mm -hmm. Clara, wake up. Oh, Dan, tell me, what did I say? I can't believe it. Tell me. It was the same as last night. Something about goodbye, Walter, and then a lot of things I couldn't make out, and then a single word. Palinol. Palinol? How could I? Clara, Palinol killed your husband. That's what he died from. Dan, I can't understand. You've got to believe me. I don't know what to think. Why are you getting off? I can't sleep anymore. I, I'm going to walk around a while. Let me go with you. No, stay here, please. I'd rather be alone. Hey, don't you believe me? I, I don't know. Oh, please, Dan. Please. I'm sorry, Clara. Why did we have to go, Dan? We have two more days. I know, but it won't hurt to get back to town a little early. Oh, and I thought it was going to be so beautiful. Just the two of us, the lake all to ourselves. Why did you have to spoil it, Dan? I didn't spoil it, Clara. But it's so silly, don't you see? All this fuss about nothing. Let's not discuss it, Clara. Oh, here we are. Why are we stopping? Thought we could pick up a sandwich. I'm starved. But, Dan... I just offered you breakfast, and you said you weren't hungry. That was an hour ago. Come on. Dan, you wouldn't eat yesterday either. You're afraid, aren't you, Dan? You're afraid I'll poison you. Oh, Clara, don't be silly. That's what it is, isn't it? Do you see what you're doing, Dan? The trial's over. I was acquitted. The world found me innocent. But it doesn't mean anything if you don't believe it. What can I do, Dan? What can I say? The only one who counts is you, don't you see? I'm sorry, Clara. I, I've tried. That's all I can tell you. I'm sorry. You've brought it out in the open now, haven't you, Dan? There's nothing you can do now but watch her. Watch her carefully every moment you're with her. You've given up eating at home, of course. That was point number one. And you've taken a new interest in the notebooks you kept on the trial. Every evening you get them out and go over them carefully, examining, analyzing, making new notes. Dan, I wish you wouldn't do that anymore. Oh, all right. I'll take them up to my room. How can you sit there, Dan? How can you sit there and drag everything out on a marble slab all over again? Don't my feelings mean anything to you? I'm sorry, Clara. Is that all you can say? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all I've heard for weeks. <laughs> it's all over between us, isn't it? You're convinced that I killed Walter Winston. Clara, above everything else, I guess I'm still just a newspaper man trying to get at the truth. I won't rest until I'm sure. Since you ask me, I'll tell you. I haven't satisfied myself that you actually killed your husband, but I am satisfied that you had more to do with it than I ever suspected. And I'm convinced that I'm in a terrible mistake in defending you the way I did. I see. It is gone, then, isn't it? I'm afraid it is. Oh. Clara, what are you doing? Burning some trash. Trash? Well, they're my trial notebooks. All right, what about it? You haven't any right to take... Oh, haven't I? If you think I'm going to sit here night after night while you pour over those horrible things... You're things. not doing your case any good, Clara. So I'm on trial again. I wish I were on trial. I wish I could drag the whole miserable thing out in the air again <laughs> and force you to admit you're wrong. And I wish I were wrong. Do you? Of course I do. Oh, Dan. Unfortunately, I'm right. You killed him. You poisoned him. And you'd kill me right now if I gave you the chance, wouldn't you? Oh, Dan, you don't know what you're saying. Oh, yes, I do. And don't think it's easy laying it on the line the way... This way, I... I loved you once. But I guess I was just in love with an idea, a crazy daydream about an innocent woman who needed someone to fight the good fight. <laughs> when it's over, Clara, it's all gone. There's nothing left. <laughs> Goodbye, Clara. <laughs> yes? There's a Mr. Dan Hart. 
Dan Partridge to see you, Mr. Gresham. Oh, send him in. Hmm. Wonder what Dan wants. Hello, Dan. Oh, D.A. Oh, what's the matter? You got something on your mind? It's Clara. Oh? Yes. I made an awful mistake, Gresham. I just had it out with her. Had it out? I don't get it. She was guilty, Gresham. What? I'm as sure of it as if I'd seen her do it. Oh, that's a pretty serious statement, Dan. How are you so sure? It was something she said in her sleep. Yeah? I couldn't understand all of it. It happened two nights in a row. There was a lot of unintelligible muttering and then something like, Goodbye, Walter. Followed by the single word, Palinol. Palinol, huh? Yes. You're sure about that? Positive. There were other things, of course. I see. Mm -hmm. I love her, Gresham. But there's something bigger involved here. We've got to do something about it. I'm awfully sorry, Dan. Well, what do you mean? We can't do anything. She's been acquitted, and she can never be brought to trial again for the same offense. You mean I'm supposed to go on living with a poisoner? There isn't a thing you can do. Did you discuss this with her, Dan? Yes. I remember something she said, something to the effect that she'd rather die than go on knowing you didn't believe in her. Do you remember that? Yes. And still you discussed your feeling with her? I couldn't hide it. I, I was afraid to eat. I could see a new purpose in everything she did. You are a crusader, aren't you, Dan? I can't help it. That's just the way I'm put together. Okay. You'll have to handle this your own way. We can't do a thing. It's a problem, isn't it, Dan? You walk all the way home from the DA's office thinking about it, taking plenty of time. You knew what he'd say before you went there, didn't you? You accomplished one thing anyway, though. He knows about it now. You walk on and on, thinking, trying to see the thing clearly. Then you decide. The only thing that matters is whether Clara lives or dies. You wait an hour or two longer, giving her plenty of time to make good on her promise. Five o'clock. If she has the nerve, it's all over now. If she hasn't, you'll have to take the other way. Oh. Hello. Hello. Well, what's this? Why are you packing? I'm leaving. What did you expect? Leaving? There's nothing left to keep me here. I'm sorry you're early. I'd hope to be gone when you arrive. Don't be silly, Clara. There's no place for you to go. Anything's better than this. Well, I wish you a lot of luck. Thanks. Same to you, Dan. Drink on it? Sure, I'll drink on it. Here you are. Thanks. Skull. Skull. Dan. What's the matter? I don't know. I'm getting dizzy. so sleepy, Dan. Sure you're sleepy. Just lie down on the bed. Mm. You don't need an alibi, do you, Dan? Palinol acts slowly. They'll never be able to state definitely when it was taken. And there are no slips. You unpack her bags, put things away. Yes, Dan, the books are balanced now, and you feel easier. You'll be back at the evening bulletin tomorrow, battling for justice again. This time with nothing hanging over your head. Dan. Dan. Yes? Dan, I... Oh. Hmm. Goodbye, Clara. <laughs> Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. Meantime, here's an interesting insight on how the atom is already being employed to create wonderful new products for you. Nylon, for instance, was created by rearranging the atoms in molecules, thus forming an entirely new type of material that can be made sheerer, yet stronger and longer wearing than nature's own silk. And in much the same way, certain chemists now rearrange the atoms in gasoline molecules.
to create an entirely new type super fuel for automobiles, new signal gasoline. That, you see, is why new signal is not just pre-war quality gasoline, not just old style gasoline improved, but a new type super fuel with improved performance so immediately apparent you feel it, see it, hear it. I could tell you about quicker starting, faster pickup, higher anti-knock, but there's no story half as convincing as the one your own motor will tell you when you try your first tank full of new signal gasoline. As you step on the accelerator and feel your car get young again, see if you don't agree with the thousands of Western motorists who are saying there's new pleasure in driving with new signal gasoline. And now, back to the Whistler. Well, Dan, the one-man jury turned in a conviction, didn't it? The champion of justice came through again, this time by taking the law into his own hands. Or was that the real reason? Was there something deeper and more sordid behind it all? Was it something else that made you cultivate Clara Wentworth and rise to her defense, win the fight for her, then make her fall in love with you? You have a strange mind, haven't you, Dan? Full of conflicting elements. Idealism on one side, hypocrisy on the other. It's all pretty tangled, isn't it? You spend the evening of Clara's death in a bar room on 3rd Street thinking. You feel better at a time like this with people around you. Then at 9.30 that night, you look in the mirror behind the bar and you jump when you see the DA standing behind you. Come on, Dan. What? Well, what's the matter? Let's go. Where? Let's go up to your house. I want you to see your wife. Well, what's the matter? Is something wrong? You better save it until we get there. Welcome home, Dan. Clara! Surprise. Why, well, no. How is she, Doc? She's still a little drowsy, but we got rid of most of it, though. You say you're not surprised, Dan? I don't have anything to say. Well, I do, brother. I've got plenty to say. But before I go into that, there's something personal. This may cost me my job, Mr. Parcher, but it'll be worth it. <laughs> you low-down hypocritical rat. I've got a decent respect for an ordinary court, but you haven't got the pride of a carnival pickpocket. Get up. Uh, uh, I said get up. Yeah. Yeah. I thought there were limits to what a man would do for money. I guess there aren't. We have the complete picture, Mr. Parcher, from the time you met Clara Wentworth until you tried to kill her because she was going to give the money away. We knew she didn't kill her husband. That's why we conceded the trial, and not because of your false front editorials. You see, we made a mistake. We thought he was poisoned by ethanol. Two weeks into the trial, and the surgeon tells us he was wrong. It was paranol with the same kind of symptoms. Where does that get you? This far. It's hard to buy that drug. Clara Wentworth couldn't have bought it. Hey, wait a minute. Shut up. When the surgeon told me it was paranol, he knew about it. I knew about it, and the murderer knew about it. That's all. How did you know about it, Mr. Parcher? Why, why, I... When you came to my office, you should have known that sleep-talking yarn wouldn't hold water. Your wife couldn't have said it because she'd never heard of it in her life. Listen, you can't... I'm go... not finished. There was one piece of evidence we didn't reveal at the trial. The poison bottle we found in the fish pond. It was bought and signed for in Philadelphia by a Mr. Jeffries. This afternoon, I find that you and Mr. Jeffries have the same handwriting. All right, what's the answer to that one? There isn't any. Congratulations. That's the first honest statement you ever made. It wasn't worth it, Parcher. Not even for Wentworth's quarter million. Come on. You're going to write an editorial. One that starts out, I, Dan Forth Parcher, of my own free will and volition, you know. Look great in the middle of page one. We'll title it, Epitaph for a Heel. Thank <laughs> you. 
Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood signal dealer. This program is directed by George W. Allen, based on a story by John Michael Hayes, with music by Wilbur Hatch. This is Marvin Miller speaking, suggesting that you try New Signal, the new gasoline you can prove is superior. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>